different after you was in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Every day, you just want to worship God. You find time to worship. So you can worship God in your drawing. So that's what you did. You worship Him in your drawing. And God is honored and glorified in that. You know that God can cause you to draw prophetically? Do you know what that means? He calls you to draw what you hear and see in the spirit. He have you draw it to warn people of things to come. He have you draw to emphasize a certain thing in the earth. You believe God can use you like that? The fans? Father, use him, God, to prophetic, prophetically draw. Yes, oh, God. God, to let the people know where your heart and your mind is. And we thank you for you giving him this impartation. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Proverbs 24, verses 1 through 4. Proverbs 24, verses 1 through 4. Proverbs 24, verses 1 through 4. But the ball now can turn it back down a little bit. No, we can turn Proverbs 24, verses 1 through 4. That's an easy one. You have it, say amen. amen. Young people, you have it. Let's read the word of the Lord together. Amen. Let's go. Be not thou envious of men, neither desire to be with them, for their hearts study of destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is a house builded. And by understanding it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. We're going to read verse 4 together. Everyone in the house of the Lord, read verse 4 together. Come on. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. I need a dollar for this. You're not going to get it back. Uh, who's enthusiastic today? <laughs> Youth, who's enthusiastic today? Woo! <laughs> who's happy today? <laughs> uh, Miles. Write Miles a check for $25. Yes. Come on, Miles. Okay. Next time y'all will be excited next time, won't you? You'll be excited next time. Sit right there, sir. This is yours, okay? This is your dollar. I want you to look at it. It's your dollar. What I'm going to preach about is going to cost you if you don't listen to what I'm going to tell you. It's going to cost not only you, it's going to cost everybody in this church. If you don't listen to what I'm getting ready to teach you, it's going to, you're going to lose half of what God has given you. And if you keep on doing what God tells you not to do, it's going to even get short. Because there are two things that I want to talk about that's going to cost you big time in life. It's going to cost you big time. And the first thing that's going to cost you is ignorance. Ignorance. Let me give you a real simple, plain definition for ignorance. It means you don't know something. Now someone may argue... Pastor, everybody is ignorant to something. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Everybody in this room is ignorant to something. But what I want to talk to the church and the youth about today is being willfully ignorant. The Bible talks about us being willfully ignorant, which means there are some things that we do not know that we should know. We just choose not to know them. So my challenge to the young people and to the church is for us not to be willfully ignorant in these times and in this season because it will cost you big time. There's a price 
that you and I cannot afford to pay. Ignorance will cost you. When Solomon became king, he was a very young man. He asked the Lord for two things. Anybody know what those two things are? Wisdom and what else? Somebody knows the scripture. Solomon asked the Lord for two things. He asked the Lord for wisdom and knowledge because he says, I'm a young, he says, I'm, I'm like a child. And I don't know how to lead your people. And so the first thing we're going to define is knowledge first. We're going to define knowledge first. He asked for wisdom and knowledge, but we're going to define knowledge because ignorance means I don't know. Everybody say, I don't know. I don't know. Amen. I don't know something. I don't know. I can give you a whole big fancy definition, but we're going to use a real simple definition so all the children can get it. Ignorance means I don't know something. And Solomon asked the Lord, give me wisdom, give me knowledge. And so knowledge is, I want every young person to pay attention to this Definition. It means I am familiar with the facts of the truths or the principles of something because I have studied or I've investigated it. I'm familiar with the principles, with the truths or the facts about something because I have studied it or I've investigated it. It's called knowledge. I know it because I've spent time with it. I've investigated it. I've researched it. So I know the facts, I know the truth, I know the principles about it. Everyone say knowledge. knowledge. Solomon asked the Lord for wisdom. And I have to give you this definition because I want every young person to get this. Wisdom is, watch this, wisdom then is the knowledge of what is true or right in order to make the right action. Wisdom is the knowledge of what is true or right in order to make the proper action, you can have knowledge and not have wisdom. Amen. It's very possible to have knowledge and not have wisdom. Wisdom shows you what to do with the knowledge. So we must ask the Lord for both wisdom and knowledge. Ignorance. I gave you a very simple definition. It means I don't I don't know something. But let me give you a, a, a more a more uh, uh, Greater definition, ignorance, young people, means I'm lacking in knowledge or training. Young people, y'all listening to me? I'm lacking in knowledge or training. We know what knowledge is. I'm unlearned, I'm uninformed, and I'm unaware. I'm lacking in knowledge or training of something. I'm unlearned, I'm uninformed, and I'm unaware. Solomon says, watch this, give me wisdom and knowledge. Because I'm a child, I don't know how to properly lead your people. The Bible says that because Solomon asked the Lord for these things, he said, because you have asked me for wisdom and knowledge, everybody say wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom and knowledge. Which is the opposite of ignorance, right? Yes. Right, this. He says, since you have asked me for wisdom and knowledge and have not asked me for riches or honor, neither have you asked me for the life of thy enemy. He says, the things that you did not ask me for, I'm going to give you those things anyway. Amen. Now, y'all got to put a stake what I just said. You need to put a flagpole with what I just said. Because you did not ask for riches and honor and fame, and you did not ask for the life of your enemy, and you asked for things that are right in order to leave my people, I'm going to give you that which you did not ask for or seek for. What I'm afraid of for the youth of today is all we're trying to do is trying to be famous and trying to be well known, and none of us want to get anything in our brain or get not knowledge or understanding. We just want to be famous. We just want to be rich. We just want green money. And we're seeking the wrong thing for the wrong reason. If you don't get knowledge and training and wisdom, it's going to cost you big time going to cost you if you stay in it. Either it's going to cost you big time. So this is not in the Bible, but I'm, but I'm going to quote it. 
some, some uh, former president of Harvard said this, says, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. What you don't know can cost you big time. Can, 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 I take, can I take you to the word of the Lord? Can I take it? Go, go to Job 36. I want to, I want to show you something in Job 36. Go to Job 36. And, 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 and go down to around, around verse 10, I believe. Y'all got a young people? Every young person needs about where's your problems? Next time, burn your Bibles. Amen? And she have a Bible. Okay? Every young person needs a Bible. Parents, invest in your children. Give them a Bible. Amen. Give them a Bible. They can, they can understand you. But this is important. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Brother Miles wants to go get his Bible. Amen. Amen. Because he wanted that $25. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I was, I was see if you gonna come back, amen. amen. <laughs> you had to come back. I would have told Ben Brown to write that check. I'm glad you came back. Amen. Watch this. Y'all read with me now. Can I get a good reader? One of the parents, one of the adults. Can I get a good reader at verse 10? I want you to read so everyone can hear now. He opened also their ears to display. To discipline. Woo! We don't like that word, do we, young people? We don't like that word, do we, young people? Job 36 and 10. He opened it also their ear to what? Discipline. To what? Discipline. All the young people say discipline. discipline. Ah, that word, that, that word again. Called correction. Co correction. It means correction. It means training. You think it's a bad word. It's a very good word. He opened up their ear to discipline. Read, brother. From sin that has evolved into something else. Come on. If they obey and serve. Watch this. If we obey and serve the Lord, watch this. Oh, if we obey and serve the Lord, then we will become what? Prosperous. Oh, did, did y'all hear the word of the Lord? In order to become prosperous, I don't have to do anything wrong. I don't have to break a law. All I have to do is obey and serve God. And then I will become prosperous. Amen. But we need that tree. We need that tree. That tree represents life and prosperity. Amen. Brother Walt's going to go get something to represent prosperity. Watch this. If I obey and serve the Lord, then I will become what? Prosperous. This tree represents life and it represents the prosperity of God. Thank you, my brother. If I obey and serve him, they should spend their days in prosperity. Come on. In their years, in their years should be in pleasure. Watch this. Watch verse 12 now. But if they obey not, if they obey not what will happen? They should perish by the sword. Is that what's happening in the earth right now, young people? Yes. If they obey not, the police says stop. The police says put your hands up. The police say, get out of the car. Guess what? They represent the Lord. I know you don't think they do, but they do. The powers that be, they are ordained of God. When the police, who is an officer and has a badge and a gun on his side, when he tells you to stop the car and raise your hands and get out, it does not matter how you feel. You must obey the law in order to live. I don't care if I don't get an amen. I don't care if y'all get upset. It's the truth anyhow. Our young men are dying because they will not obey those who are in authority. If he tell you to stop, you must stop. That's it. Amen. One of the biggest problems in the church is rebellion. Amen. And that becomes witchcraft. It's the spirit of rebellion against authority. That's it. Preach. See it all through the church, and it's, 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 it's all through our community now. When the police say stop, stop. Amen. Did I tell you ignorance can, can hurt you real bad? Yes. Come on, read, read, watch this now. And 
They should die without what? Oh, remember they died in ignorance. They didn't know. When they should have known. When they could have known. They died without knowledge when they should have known, when they could have known. So those who are ignorant of the law of God will die. What you don't know can cost you. What you don't know can hurt you. And what you don't know can even kill you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Watch this, young people. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord showed this to me. So mom and daddy says, mom and daddy says, don't, don't leave the house tonight. Mom and daddy says, don't go out with those friends. Mom and daddy says, don't get in that car with that, 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 that boy. There's something about that boy. I don't trust. Don't get in that car with that boy and go nowhere with that boy. Don't go to that party tonight. This is what the Holy Ghost showed me. He said, don't go to that party tonight. And we disobey our parents. We disobey mom and daddy. We get in the car with that person mom and daddy said don't get in the car with. We go to that party that mom and daddy told us not to go. And something happens that's beyond our control. Yeah. And we get in trouble. And then when we get in trouble and mom and daddy ask us about, this is what we say. Well, I didn't know. Don't we say that? Don't ever we say, can I get an amen around here? When we get in trouble, the first words that come out of our mouth, well, I didn't know they was going to go rob a bank. I didn't know they were smoking reefer. I didn't know they was having sex. And what you didn't know can't kill you. What you don't know can hurt you. What you don't know can really cost you in life. Ignorance can hurt you. And so while you're trying to be wise in your own eyes, you must submit to a godly authority. Amen. Amen. You know why, you know why your parents tell you you can't do certain things? Because at this point in your life, you don't know that it's harmful to you. Yes. Amen. Your daddy would not let you get behind a, a car and drive it. You might think you can drive it. Your legs might even be long enough to, to hit the steering wheel, the, 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 the accelerator. Your arms might be long enough to hold the steering wheel, but you do not have the training or the experience or the knowledge or neither the wisdom to know how to handle a vehicle and then that's over 3,000 pounds. And since you don't know that, you have parental authority that says not yet. What you don't know can hurt you. Ignorance can cost you. So I, I gotta go to Proverbs 7 because I gotta show you, I gotta show you what, what we're lacking. I'm gonna show you how, how crucial ignorance is in Proverbs 7. Can I show you young people? Yes. Watch this. Proverbs 7. Watch this now. Verse 7. And beheld among the simple ones, I discern among the youths a young man void of understanding. Young people, y'all gotta, y'all gotta pay attention to this. This young man does not have understanding. He does not have understanding. He says, pass it through the street near her corner. And he went the way to her house in the twilight, in the evening, in the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot. And subtle of heart, she is loud and stubborn. Her feet are by, not in her house. Now she is without, I mean, she's outside, now in the streets, and lieth in wait at every corner. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an imputed face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee. 
and diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with covers of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, alloys, and cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning, so let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man of my husband is not at home. He is gone a long journey. He have taken a bag of money with him, and he will come home at the day appointed. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flatting of her lips, she forced him. He goeth out to her straightway. Listen, young people, as an ox goeth to the slaughter, or as a fool to the correction of the stalks, till a dart strike through his liver, as a bird hasted to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his. Young people, what does that last word say? He was a young man without what? Understanding. Watch this. The Lord, this is what the Lord showed me prophetically. This woman, this flirtatious woman, I gotta be nice because y'all are children. This flirtatious woman represents the opportunity to do evil. Yes. She represents the opportunity to get in trouble. This young man has no business being even on the street. Amen. I'll show you he has no business being on the street says, look at the time of day that he's on the street. In the twilight. In the evening, he's out somewhere where he should not be. And she saw him, and she deceived him, and it cost him his life. He did not have what? Understand. And it cost him his life. Ignorance can cost you. What's this? Can I show you what would have got him out of trouble? Go up to verse 1, same chapter. Chapter 7, Proverbs 7, verse 1. Everyone read together. Watch this. My son, keep my words. Come on. And do what? Read verse 2 again. And do what? And my law? Come on, read. Upon your fingers. Watch this. Say unto what? Wisdom. Yes. That they may what? Every young person, look at me. My son, my daughter, keep my commandments. You want wisdom and you want knowledge? This is the book you get it from. You want to live? That's the book you get it from. If he would have kept the commandments of God, he would have lived. If he would have read the word of the Lord, he would have lived. Amen. Wisdom and knowledge come from the word of God. You see the other books? These are your, uh, these are your books of learning. Your math book, your English book, your books in school. You know why we have so many young people dying of ignorance? Because they're not reading. They're not reading. Can, can I show you something in Proverbs 2? Go, go to Proverbs 2. Go to Proverbs 2. I'm going to show you something in Proverbs 2. Go to Proverbs 2. Somebody read Proverbs 2 and 1. If you will, if you will open up this Bible. Hold on. If you would just open up this Bible, this book of wisdom, and this book of knowledge, if you would just pick it up and read it, what will happen? And hide? hide my commandments with you. What does that mean, hide my commandments with you? Put them in your heart. Put them in your mind. Put them in your heart. Put them in your mind. If you just pick this Bible up and read it and put the word of God in your heart, in your mind. Watch what happened. So that thou incline thy ear 
What is wisdom again? Wisdom is not knowledge. Wisdom is how to use knowledge and what to do in the right situation. What to do right in a given situation. Wisdom is knowing what to do in a given situation with the knowledge that you have. So it's after school. Amen. You know you're supposed to go home. You got some, some boys saying, man, come on, man, we finna get in the car, we finna go joy ride. With some says, I better not get in the car. I better not get in the car. Young ladies, Wisdom says, I better not hang out with those group of girls because they're they are they are very promiscuous right now. And I want to keep my virginity until I get married. I don't, need to be, I don't need to be accepted in their group in order to be accepted and loved by God. So I've been, I've been not, I've been not be around those girls. If you hide his word in your heart and in your mind, so that I incline thy ear unto what? Wisdom. Come on, read, woman of God. And apply thy heart to understanding. To understanding. Come on. Come on, that means I'm, I'm searching for it now. That means I'm searching for it. I have a thirst and a hunger for knowledge and wisdom. Come on. If thou seekest her as silver, yes. Searches her as so, for so, so this this thing must be valuable to me, huh? Yes. It must be valuable to me. If I seek as her as silver and searches for her as for hid treasures, come on, what does it say in verse 5? Now I have knowledge. Come on. And find the knowledge of God. Yes. For the Lord giveth wisdom. He gives what? He giveth wisdom. He gives what? He giveth wisdom. wisdom. And come on now. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Out of God's mouth comes what? Knowledge and understanding. This is the mouth of God, right? Amen. When's the last time you picked up this book? When's the last time you picked up a book? Remember, the challenge this morning is not to be willfully ignorant. That means I have the, I have the opportunity to know, but I refuse to know because I don't want to know because I don't want to be held accountable. But the word of God is right here at our disposal. And we won't pick it up. And parents, we won't make our children read the word of God because we ourselves aren't reading the word of God. So we cannot, we cannot encourage them to do what we, our, we ourselves are not doing ourselves. So now we have, a, we have a biblical illiterate family and now we have a biblical illiterate society who does not know the commandments of God. And when we don't know the commandments of God, that means we're liable to do anything. Did I tell you that what you don't know can hurt you? It can cost you. It can cost you big time. 